What's going on guys? Geosnow right here, so in today's video we're going to discuss about the iOS 10.3.3 Beta 2 that was finally released this afternoon by Apple and also we're going to discuss about the WWDC and also iOS 11. This is very important because we're going to also touch on how this, these are going to affect the jailbreaking. So let's start with the iOS 10.3.3. As you can see, going to the iPhone wiki on the beta portal, they do have the iOS 10.3.3 beta 2 with this um, this build number in here, this code name in here, and you can download already the IPSWs if you're interested into updating, although I have no idea why would you do that. Anyways, this is not important. What is important is that it contains a couple of bug fixes, also some new features, for example, on the podcasts application, you can send it through messages and um, they can play it in line. You know, the, the person who receives the, the podcast on the messages can play it in line and also uh, it includes a new uh, widget for the 3D touch of course for podcasts and many other features but they're not important. What is important is of course how it affects the jailbreaking because I know most of you are here for the jailbreaking part not for the beta itself so let's get straight into that. Now you probably remember that iOS 10.3.1 is signed. If we go ahead in here, you can see iOS 10.3.1, it's signed, has this build number in here, as well as 10.3.2. Well, 10.3.3 being in beta and in beta 2 means that Apple is probably going to end up the beta program and of course release it publicly either this week, which I dubbed, or the next week which is probably uh, much more possible. And also means that if they release it publicly and finally gets it, um, get the final release of it, you know, the, um, the Gold Master, they will probably fiddle with the iOS 10.3.1 signing status because iOS 10.3.1 has an exploit that is going to be released in the summer by Adam Donofield, you probably remember it, and also has the demo of uh, Pango jailbreaking it, which is definitely not what Apple wants. So I guess they're not going to keep it um, signed for very long after iOS 10.3.3 is going to be up because that would mean three different firmwares to be signed at the same time, which is definitely something peculiar for Apple. It did happen in the past, but of course not for very, very long. Now why is WWDC important? For those of you who have no idea what WWDC is, I'm going to try to, um, to briefly introduce it to you. It's a uh, developer conference, it's actually called a Worldwide Developer Conference, held by Apple, and uh, the most important thing that is going to come up out of this is the iOS 11. And every year Apple, uh, of course, uh, is having this conference and they present the major iOS release for that year. Of course, he, um, the um, this year is going to be iOS 11, but last year it, it of course, was um, the iOS 10. So, you probably remember iOS 10, a um, big change, yeah, on, of course, on the uh, user interface, but also on the uh, backend, on the security part, on data protection. They have, uh, of course, introduced new mitigations for the security. They hardened the GIT or JIT on a WebKit and so on. Quite a few, um, quite a few new features and quite a few um, improvements on the security part. But again, it also changed the user interface a bit. In fact, a little bit more compared with iOS 9. So it's going to be very, very cool. I'm pretty pumped up for the iOS 11 because of course, as I say, it is going to be different. It's not going to be just bug fixes or just, you know, a new feature here and there that can easily be, uh, can easily go unnoticed. It's going to be something important. It's going to be something big. So um, we're going to see it on June 5. As you can see from here, it's going to be held in here and it's going to be from June 5 to June 9. And this means, of course, pretty, pretty damn soon, considering the fact that it's uh, May 31 today. So definitely going to, uh, going to have Apple uh, releasing the iOS 10.3.3 faster because they have to also create the beta one for iOS 11. That uh, is, of course, a tradition at Apple to release the, uh, the first beta of the major software during the uh, first day or the second day, I can't remember, of WWDC. So by June 5, they, they must already have the first beta of iOS 11 ready, which means, of course, they can't, uh, they can't fiddle anymore with 10.3.3, which, of course, means that iOS 10.3.3 might stay uh, signed for uh, a longer time and also means that it can be the last version of iOS 10.x. But, of course, with Apple nowadays, Everything can change in a couple hours. So yeah, don't uh, don't get it for, for granted. But anyways, this means that Pangu might also have their chance to, 
to release whatever they're working on, but that's definitely not guaranteed. You probably know their demo was for iOS 10.3.1 and 10.3, and uh, if iOS 10.3.1 will get unsigned, they might as well re release their thing. Also, if iOS 10.3.3 will get si will get uh, finally released and Apple will be focusing on iOS 11, they might as well do that. But of course, it's not known if they will release anything, just because they demo j that jailbreak, that doesn't mean they're going to release it. But anyways, that hints a possibility. Now, speaking about important things that are going to happen, there are a lot of hints that Apple is going to drop the 32-bit devices finally. Now, of course, this is not a good thing, and uh, I do have a couple of 32-bit devices, for example, the iPhone 5 and 5C, a couple of iPads and so on, the iPod Touch 5th generation, uh, which was, I think, already uh, dropped, as it, it's no longer supporting iOS 10. Anyways, the 32-bit devices might as well get dropped now completely, uh, those that can still of course run iOS 10, they will probably not get iOS 11 and I'm 80% positive that they're not going to get that update out because they're of course very slow and Apple has been uh, hinting the fact that they're going to uh, pull out the 32-bit applications from the uh, store and uh, developers have to update them a couple months ago actually with that message that you get when you install a 32-bit application that was the fact that it's going to slow down your device. Nowadays it, it says that um, the application is no, longer to is no longer working in the future, it's going to probably not uh, no longer work in the future and um, the developer must update it in order to uh, to ensure it's working so definitely hinting the fact that they might uh, finally put an end to the 32 bit of course something bad for the 32 bit users but that also means that the next jailbreak for 32 bit might also be pretty much forever that that is if if it comes so uh, yeah, pretty much the same thing that happened at WWDC last year when the iPhone 4S was dropped. It no, it didn't actually uh, got any iOS 10 update, which of course made it uh, completely useless for iOS 10, and it didn't um, get a jailbreak either for 9.3.5, which kind of sucks. But yeah, th that's pretty much it. So this is actually it, guys. Uh, very important news: iOS 11 is going to come up in a couple freaking days. This is so damn uh, interesting and I'm so damn pumped but also at the same time we have iOS 10.3.3 that is going to also come out so do not update to 10.3.3 nothing very very important that you should update for stay as low as possible if you are on 10.3.1 do not update to 10.3.2 or 10.3.3 your best bet would be 10.3.1 if you're already there. If you're on 10.2.1, stay there. If you're jailbroken already, you probably should never update because you know the situation is pretty damn bad with jailbreaks lately. So if you're jailbroken, profit and do not update. Till the next time, I'm Geosnow. Peace out.